Good morning. Welcome to a class on spiritual warfare. We are engaged in a, in a battle. I don't know that everyone recognizes it or that they are engaged for that matter. But many, many are hurting. Many are hurting because of various things going on in their lives. They may be hurting, their loved ones hurting because of, because of sin. You know, if the root problem is in the spiritual realm, then that's where it must be addressed. A lot of times we, we see therapists, we take pills, things trying to treat the problems in this realm, and many times that's appropriate. However, if the problem is a spiritual problem, then it has to be dealt with in the spiritual realm, otherwise we're just... We're we'll just put band-aids on it. We've talked about the beings in the spiritual realm. We've talked about God and about Jesus sitting on the throne, being large and in charge of the spiritual realm. And of course, God's Holy Spirit is there as well. We talked about Satan and his fall. Satan is a created being. He was uh, rebellious. Wanted, wanted glory like God, rebelled and was thrown out of heaven, and a lot of angels followed him. We talked about the demons that follow Satan, and we talked about angels. We started our study of uh, spiritual warfare in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, talking about being strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. We talked about standing firm. Because Jesus has already won the ground that we're standing on. He's already won the war. But stand firm. Don't, don't give your ground. Don't give it to Satan. We talked about the belt of truth. Where it starts out talking about the armor, the belt of truth. We're talking absolute truth, God's truth. The belt of truth that underpins the rest of the armor. The rest is dependent upon this. Truth is not opinions, it's not traditions, it's not necessarily what we've always been taught. It's the opposite of lies and deceit that demonic forces use. We must gird ourselves with this truth. We must be students of the Word. Last week we talked about the breastplate of righteousness. This really is truth applied to our life. We talked about trash management, if you remember if you were here last week. About sometimes we don't like to get rid of our spiritual trash, we like to manage it. We can't, we can't do that. We need to just get rid of it. What goes into our minds? What do we feed our minds? Because we are what we eat. We'll talk about that more later this morning. We need to yield and submit to God and let His Spirit transform us. Okay, so in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15, the, the third piece of armor listed, it says, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So the, the Roman soldier's shoes were, were very important. He had cleats on his uh, shoes to help him get a, a strong footing. Now, I will say that I have typically misunderstood this verse. Let me tell you what I mean. Okay, so shod your feet with the preparation. Preparation is also readiness. In other words, be ready with this. This is armor. We're going to battle. You need to be ready. You need to shod your feet with this. With what? Well, it says the gospel of peace. Well, what is gospel? Well, if you had asked me not long ago, you know, I could have told you because I know everything. The gospel. Well, that means how to be saved, right? How to go to heaven, right? It's the gospel. Well, gospel literally means good news. And how to go to heaven, how to be saved is not the only good news. 
There's also good news of, in the here and now, things that, that God has provided for us. Think of fruit of the Spirit. I said the here and now. Specifically here, we're talking about peace. Okay? The good news of peace. Now, this is not world peace. This does not necessarily even mean that Christians will be at peace with everyone. In fact, in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34, Jesus says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Hmm. So what peace are we talking about? This is that peace that is fruit of the Spirit. God's peace which is calm and tranquility of soul in the midst of difficult circumstances. <clears throat> Again, it is fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, list the fruit of the Spirit. I learned them long ago with a song. I don't know if you know them, but, and I'm not going to stand up here and teach you the song right now. Um, do you find peace to be an elusive thing? Do you find peace to be an elusive thing? When your head hits the pillow at night, are you peace? Or are you kind of wound up? Well, if you're like most people, it depends upon your circumstances. Has anybody ever experienced storms of life? Well, I saw one hand go up. Thought, you know, we all should raise our hands, right? Um, storms of life. Well, I'm going to share a couple of personal stories. Uh, storms of life. Just everybody understands we all have storms of life. So, and there are many. And I know each of you could come up with storms of life as well. First one I'll mention. Uh, I was on a business trip in uh, Livermore, California, long ways from here. I just sat down to the nice steak dinner, and uh, my wife calls me. Hello. And I can't remember exactly how the conversation went. But our daughter, Ashley, was in uh, ER at Cook's. Uh, she'd had a neurological thing going on where she had a tremor in her right arm. But now she'd also developed uh, something that uh, <clears throat> sounds sound like respiratory distress, like you're having a hard time breathing. Uh, doctors <clears throat> couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Like, okay. You know, by the way, her, one of her older sisters is AWOL. 16-year-old, her and her best friend are missing. Uh, many hours passed where they would be at home and not answering their phones. And, Well, okay. Um, I, I was I was not at peace. In fact, I couldn't eat my meal, so I just took it to go. Got back to my hotel room, just praying, and also fig tried to figure out how I could get home as fast as I could. Took the red eye out of San Francisco that night, but maybe I have more peace than I would have if I wasn't wasn't a Christian. But uh, I know I obviously had some growing to do because those were some difficult. You know, I was. Call and leave a message just for my daughter. Say, look, I'm giving you until it was either 10 or 10.30 to call and tell us what's going on or we'll call the police. Tell them you're missing. Because, you know, for all we know, these two girls have been kidnapped. So it was, it was uh, not a fun time. All turned out well in both of those situations. Another time that was a storm of our life, many of you know our son David has some mental illness. And uh, his freshman year of college, he went into full-blown psychosis and ended up in a um, mental hospital in College Station. We went to visit him, and uh, he walked into the room, and I could tell something wasn't, wasn't right. And, uh, you know, he told us, you're, you're not my parents. What do you mean? You know, and it, and it went downhill from there. 
Uh, I thought they were going to have to put me in that hospital. <laughs> it was a uh, it was a very anxious time for for both Penny and I. Storms of life, you know, all those situations turned out okay, but uh, uh, peace was an elusive thing. I know many of you have had storms of life as well. Perhaps a divorce, perhaps the death of a spouse, but death of a child. You know, and the list goes on. Of, we all have storms of life. But what about peace? I'll give you two pictures of peace. You got uh, one might be a, a picture of a imagine a calm lake, serene. Everything in this picture on this lake, the glass. The, the water's glassed over. Everything is nice and it's just calm and serene. Picture it, feel it. I'll give you, give you another picture. Same lake, but now it's stormy. It's pitch black sky, the boats are being tossed, the trees are blowing. It's stormy, picture it. But there's a bird on a rock that is singing, and there's this like spotlight down the bird is just singing. So you've got calm, peace of being surrounded by uh, trouble. This is more of a, a biblical picture of peace. It is calm, peace, and storm. This is this is peace that, that we want. This is this is what these shoes are about. With our enemy assaulting us, be at peace. He doesn't want us to be at peace. He wants us to leave the covering of God. But we need to let God calm us about our decision and our circumstances after we've guarded ourselves with truth and we put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, you may have heard it said, we need to let go and let God. Easier said than done sometimes, isn't it? I don't mean, I'm a control freak. I, I don't like to let go and let anybody. Hence, I have problems with peace. If peace is not your normal way of operating, then you're out of sync spiritually. If worry and anxiety are your norm, you're not wearing your shoes. You're not wearing these shoes. You know, folks, we can't stand firm against spiritual forces of evil without the shoes of the good news of peace. Good news of peace. The world can give you momentary peace, but only God can give you lasting peace. All right, I want to look at several scriptures. You want to turn with me. John chapter 14, we'll start there. In John chapter 14, Jesus is hours from the cross. He's talking to his disciples. He's comforting his disciples. He's preparing them for what's ahead. Verse 27 of John 14 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Um, anybody relate to that? Everybody ever been there? Your heart been troubled? Your heart been fearful? Jesus says what? He's given us his peace. Chapter 16 of John. Verse 33. And Jesus is telling them a lot of things. The Holy Spirit's being promised to him. He's talked about, he's, he's foretelling his death and his resurrection. Some things his disciples don't necessarily want to hear. In verse 33, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage, for I have overcome the world. You know, we can take a lot of time talking about these, but again, Jesus says, I give you peace. In the world, surely we can relate in the world having tribulation. John chapter 20, 
we get to John chapter 20, Jesus has been crucified, and it is Sunday, and he's been resurrected. We will uh, begin in verse 19 of John 20. Jesus is among the disciples here for the first time. Verse 19, when therefore it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, notice that they were afraid. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, so Jesus comes, this is his first appearance to them, what does he tell them? He tells them, peace be with you. Peace. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands, his side. The disciples therefore rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus therefore said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Romans chapter 8. My favorite chapter of the Bible. We'll read this one verse. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. For the mind set on the flesh is death. But the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Life and peace. Do we struggle with peace? We need to think about what our mind is set on, and we're going to come back to that in a minute when we look at Philippians. What do we set our minds on? What do we feed our mind, like we talked about last week? Romans chapter 14. Romans 14, we're talking about principles of conscience. We're talking about not offending others, not causing others to stumble. In verse 19, it says, So then, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. Think about it. Are you one who pursues peace? Pursues peace for yourself, peace for others? Because there are those who pursue conflict, who pursue strife. And obviously that is not what we need to be doing. Chapter 15 of Romans. Verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was within, is within us. We talked about that last week. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. It's given to us as a pledge down payment, our inheritance. Notice here, the God of hope fill you with joy and peace which are fruit of the Spirit in believing. Believing what? Well, the truth. It comes back to that belt of truth. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 says, Be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Action. Be diligent to preserve unity. Have you ever been in a church that did not have unity? It did not have peace? Ever been through a split? No fun. Be diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And I really think verse 2 tells us a lot of how to do that. It says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing forbearance to one another in love. So with all humility, typically if there is discord somewhere, there, there's some pride that needs to be swallowed. Maybe our own. So... That's the first thing to look at. Gentleness. You know, sometimes it's not so much what is said, but how it is said. Gentleness. I, not something that comes to me naturally. The Lord has had to work on me. I am more comfortable being the bull in the china shop. And what happens when you're the bull? Things get broken. People get broken. Stuff has to be mended and healed. Be humble, be gentle, and patient. Again, not one of my natural qualities. 
I'm always patient as long as I get whatever I want, whenever I want it. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so, uh, some of you all know, we need to be humble and gentle and patient. Then it says forbearing, one of those church words, forbearing. Ones, I mean. Basically, it means putting up with each other. Okay? We need to put up with each other. Preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. All right. I'm running out of time. So, Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. says, And let the peace of Christ rule or be arbiter in your hearts. To which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful, and let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. And the word of Christ. Again, that comes back to the belt of truth. Dwell on it. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. Wow. Anybody want peace in every circumstance? Yeah, time me up. Okay, the last uh, passage I want to talk about today is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. This is some of Daryl's territory box. Uh, Philippians chapter 4. A lot here. We won't have time to do it full justice, but it starts off in chapter 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. Wow. Well, that's easy, right? Hello? No. Yeah, it's easy when there's nothing in your life. There's no storms of life, right? It's easy to not be anxious. But be anxious for nothing. You notice that so looks to me like a command. It's easier said than done. But know, know what God says here. Be anxious for nothing, but here's what I want you to do. He says, I want you to bring it to me. I want you to bring it to me. In everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication specifically is a prayer where you're asking for something. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God. Notice we come to God with this anxious thought, with this storm of life. And we do it with thanksgiving. Being thankful for what he does for us. Thankful for who he is. Okay, so that's what we are to do. It requires action on our part. Notice in verse 7 what he does as a result. In the peace, it's these shoes, the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, we can't, un we can't understand it, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is where spiritual warfare is fought. <laughs> here. What's God going to do? That peace of God? Imagine him just putting, putting our hearts and our minds in his hands and protecting it. It will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Then he tells us what to think about. Let your mind dwell on it lists eight things. I don't know if this is meant to be an exhaustive list. But it says whatever is true truth, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence, anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Think of that as a checklist. Okay, I've got this thing in my mind, should it be there? Go down that list, and if the answer is, mm, it doesn't seem to match that up to that. Get rid of it. We can toss it out of our minds. Thinking on the things that it tells us in verse 8 leads to peace. Again, is it true? Is it honorable? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it of good repute? Is it excellent? Is it worthy of praise? Think on these things. Verse 9 
says, The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace shall be with you. A couple things to note there. It says, notice it says practice these things. It comes down to our behavior. What are we going to do? What are we going to practice? Righteousness. The breastplate. We need to put on the belt of truth. We need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We need to practice these things. Notice in verse 9, it's the God of peace. Verse 7 was the peace of God. His peace. We get to verse 9, it's God himself. The God of peace will be with you. Do we not want that? Is that not where peace comes from? And we went through that very quickly. Storms of life will come. God did not tell us as Christians, you're not going to have storms in your life. But he does give us peace in the storm if we'll accept it, if we'll put our shoes on. Storms of life will come. Spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places don't take a break during storms of life. They prowl like a roaring lion, remember? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. We need to be prepared for the spiritual storms of life and be alert regarding our enemy. We must be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. We need to put on the belt of truth. We need to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We need to shot our feet with the readiness of the good news of peace. Next week is uh, Shield of Faith. Let's, let's end this morning with prayer. Father, thank you so much for loving us and blessing us. Thank you for peace. Your peace, which is only found in you and is fruit of the Spirit, Father, we ask you to, to help us find that peace, those that are struggling with it. We ask for peace during the storms of life. Father, may we let go and let you have your way with us. May we submit to you and let you transform us. Father, we ask you to forgive us when we fail you and give us a heart that is pure. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.